Hello, um, my name is Mr. Sherwood, and I wanted to take this moment to thank you for participating in our virtual back to school night program. Um, so I'm going to be spending a little time today going over some of the information for my classes. Um, so I'm going to be presenting a uh, presentation for you. And so, uh, well, again, welcome to Back to School Night 2021. Uh, I know it's a little weird being virtual like this, but we do what we have to do in these circumstances. And so, again, I'd like to thank you for logging in and checking out my video, um, showing that you are have an interest in your students' education and in their teachers and all things of that nature. So to start off, we'll talk a little bit about myself. Um, so I graduated from Montclair State University with a BS in biological sciences education. And I'm very proud of this fact because Montclair is well known as one of the best teacher preparation colleges, definitely in New Jersey, if not uh, in the entire country. And so there's a lot of pride being a Red Hawk uh, because of everything I learned and everything that I experienced while attending that school. I began teaching in the fall of, tw of 2010. And I, I taught in a few districts until finally coming to Cliffside in 2015. And so I've been very fortunate and very happy teaching here in Cliffside. And I have um, enjoyed myself very thoroughly. I've met many interesting and good people, both in terms of teachers and students. And it's just been a great experience. I returned to Montclair State University a couple of years ago in order to earn a certification to teach students with disabilities. So now I am not only a biology teacher, but I am also a special ed science teacher as well. And so I teach a full assortment of different types of classes because of my two certifications. So when it comes to teaching philosophy overall, I follow two main ideas. The first idea that I follow is firm but fair. So when I develop all my expectations and all my rules and all my procedures for class, I keep in mind that I'm gonna be firm with students in that this is what I expect, but I'm also fair recognizing that everybody is human everybody make mistakes, things happen. And so that attitude has been very positive for me and it's worked for me based on my natural personality. And I've created many, many good relationships with both students and other teachers because of that fact. In addition to firm but fair, I also believe in empathy and kindness. I believe that there's no reason to be mean spirited um, for no reason. So I am typically very kind to people and with my students and I feel that the students very much respond to that um, because there's no pressure and they don't feel pushed uh, forced against a wall so to speak in terms of our interactions which is very helpful. So overall for my teaching teaching schedule this year I teach three three courses all right I teach biology I teach biology seminar and I teach the zoology animal behavior class so the biology and biology seminar are similar yet different at the same time and zoology is a completely separate type of course. So when we look at biology, biology is a state mandated course for graduation. It is the first course in our catalog for science here in the high school. And so all students take have to take biology. Um, depending on the level that a student is at and their aspirations for the future would determine what level of the class they will take. Um, biology seminar is the lowest model it's a pull-out replacement class for regular biology so that students with disabilities can have a, um, a more successful experience with the course based on modifications and accommodations for their own individual needs. Biology inclusion model is also involving special ed students, but these are students at a different level and they will be in a class with um, their neuronormal peers. And often there will be two, there, there's two teachers in the room. So there'll be a special education teacher and a general content teacher. I have fulfilled both roles in my time here. Um, this year, I happen to be fulfilling the lead teacher role. And so in my two classes, I am supported by the wonderful Mrs. Colangelo and the wonderful Mr. Bracco. So depending on your child's period would determine which of those two individuals um, they are working with. Mr. Bracco is with me for period one and Ms. Colangelo is with me for period seven. Um, the biology neuronormal is another way of looking at the college prep biology class. Um, and so from there, you also have biology honors. So honor students can take that course. And when students reach their junior or senior year, they'd have the opportunity to take AP biology, which is the highest and highest level of biology and is more akin to college level material and is very difficult. 
Um, so from the beginning of the, of the school year, I saw the importance in setting up a classroom routine. And so what you're seeing on the screen right now is basically what uh, the routine is. And so it starts out in the beginning of the period with a do now question, taking attendance, some time for all the students to log into the meet. And basically students just getting ready to begin class. They have their notebooks ready to go and everything is fine. Um, once we're ready to start, we lead, I lead directly into a direct instruction period of approximately 20 minutes, sometimes 25, where students are taking notes, where we're discussing things, there's questions and answers, students are answering prompts, sometimes maybe even watching a short video depending on what we're talking about. And so this student, this lets students learn the material we need for other types of activities like labs and group work and things like that, depending on what's going on. Be due to the length of our periods this year, I've incorporated a five minute break just to give students a chance to take a step back. Um, so a, a checkpoint question is often involved with that to see if students are understanding the lesson. When they return from break, they're working on independent work. Um, so that could be web quests, video assignments, articles, sim computer simulations, anything that is meant to help fortify the material that was discussed in the direct instruction period to help students understand what we're talking about, what we're working with at the time. If you look at my expectations, my expectations are very much along the lines of many of the other teachers uh, that teach here, as well as just general ideas for students to be successful. So things including logging into Google Meets, having a notebook, uh, giving effort and trying their best on all the assignments, and just following due dates and checking their own grades. In terms of a grading scale, our department here at Cliffside Park High School follows a universal scale, meaning that we all grade material in the same fashion. So overall, we have a 60, 30, 10 breakdown. 60% of their grade is going to be assessments, so things like tests and labs, very large, complicated web quests, things of that nature. 30% for classwork, so that's your class participation, your smaller assignments, your what would be considered homework, um, small web quests, reviews, things of that nature. And then 10% going to benchmark exams, which are exams that are based around the marking periods to show progression and to see how the students are doing with their materials. Um, if for the biology class, uh, the way my class is break it, broken down is every marking period represents one unit. All right, so we have four marking periods, so there's four core units. Each unit not only is discussing scientific content, but it also is making a connection, making connections to the real world. Okay, so for right now, we are marking period one. We're talking about cells and world health. And you can see we'll move on to genetics in the winter time, uh, then into evolution uh, in like March or so, and then ecology and preserving the environment in spring and the end of the school year. All right, so it works very well. There's, there's lots of activities and lots of cool things that we do within each of these units. And the units are spaced apart appropriately so that students can understand all the information. If, you're, if your student has me for zoology, uh, zoology is a much different situation because zoology is a half year elective, All right? So students can take this elective when they're juniors and seniors uh, due to the fact that they need to take biology and chemistry first as prerequisite courses for these electives. So when students take zoology, they are studying the animal kingdom, All right? We start at the bottom with the most basic animals, which are sponges, and then we work our way all the way up to mammals by the end of the semester. Uh, marking period one is more based on invertebrate type animals, and marking period two is more based on vertebrate type animals. Uh, when students uh, finish the semester course of zoology, they move over to a forensics course, right, which is taught by another instructor. And then we flip the two groups. So the group that had the forensics class in the fall would then have me in spring, would then have me uh, switch and then be in spring. Okay, and so uh, that's how that works. And then finally, um, to wrap up my little presentation here, I uh, just would like to talk about some of the other things that I do besides teaching. Um, so overall, there are four activities that I work with as an advisor in some fashion or another. Um, the first one being the sophomore class, so the class of 2023. Um, and then we have the GSA, which is our Gender Sexuality Alliance Club. Okay, um, I am a co-advisor for the drama club this year. All right, so we're going to be getting started soon uh, with those kinds of things. And uh, we might not be running it this year, but I also run the Science League. All right, so the Science League is a competition-based club where students who are interested in scientific fields can go against um, competition of students from around the count, from around the state. 
in work to see how we uh, compare to them and things like that. And that about does it for my presentation today. So I would like, once again, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in and watching my video. Um, it means a lot to me that people are interested, all right, and want to hear what the teacher has to say, both about um, their schedule and themselves and things like that. So I hope everyone has a good night. I hope everyone is well and healthy and everyone take care and take care of the people around you. Thank you.